Barry and I had crushes at separate times, but we're excellent friends Marcia Brady revealed all, from startling twists to unknown mysteries. Everyone knows Marcia Brady, the Brady Bunch adolescent with beauty charm. And millions of fans. It's unbelievable what the Brady Bunch actor withheld until now. This film explores Maureen McCormick's life. Keep watching once you hear these discoveries, you'll never see Marcia the same. Early life Maureen McCormick was born in Los Angeles, San Fernando Valley on August 5th, 1956. The youngest of four siblings, she was the only female after three males. Irene and Richard McCormick were doubtless thrilled with Maureen's arrival. But her childhood was unusual. Hidden behind the happy family were significant issues. The McCormicks had domestic issues. Her older brother was addicted to heroin and her father's adulterous affair caused emotional scars. My brother struggled with heroin in the early 1970s and my father was unfaithful. Years later, she said both broke my family. Pain came from other sources. She recounts it in her memoir. After surviving Marsha Brady and finding my voice, Maureen exposed her father's abuse, adding to her tumultuous home life. Adding to the chaos, her father's abrupt religious conversion strained the family. Despite the chaos, her parents showcased her beauty and talents from a young age. Little did they anticipate that Maureen's public admiration would bring problems and demands. Rise to fame early. Maureen became famous early. A talent scout saw her after she won a local beauty competition at six. By age eight, she was starring in national ads, including Mattel's Barbie recycling campaign, where she politely inquired, Maureen's career accelerated in the 1960s. Being cast in popular sitcoms like Bewitched, I Dream of Jeannie, and My Three Sons kept her busy. But Maureen's big break came when Mattel called again. They wanted her voice for the updated Chatty Cathy doll. As Chatty Cathy tenderly begged, please take me with you, and I hurt myself, her voice filled homes across. Vocalizing a beloved toy was a big deal, but it was just the beginning. Her handlers had grander intentions for Maureen, who would eventually become more than a talking doll. Brady Bunch. Both excellent and awful. Maureen auditioned for a life-changing role in 1969. Brady Bunch. A guy with three sons married a woman with three girls, and the show tracked their lives. Maureen beat out 264 other candidates to play Marsha Brady, the oldest daughter. Brady Bunch by Sherwood Schwartz was an instant hit. Its lively theme song and intriguing plot made Maureen a fan favorite. Fans adored her beauty, charisma, and Marsha interpretation. But the role's fame made it hard to differentiate Maureen from her character, causing her to fight internally, working behind the scenes. On set, it wasn't always as pretty as on TV with the Bradys. Severe tension was expected with six young actors. Maureen and her on-screen sister Eve Plum fought, bringing their outside conflict into it. The writers created a sisterly rivalry between Marcia and Jan based on real-life confrontations. Their on-screen romance became more believable. They fought over something more personal. Maureen recalls one confrontation began when she saw Plum naked in the dressing room. Maureen wished she possessed Eve's body, especially her chest, after that. Things that strained their relationship. They fought more as they faced with the challenges of growing up in front of millions of people due to personality differences and teenage insecurities. As if the rivalry off-screen wasn't bad enough, Maureen had to deal with her teen years, which included a memorable show moment for the cast and spectators. Famous nose accident. Maureen had a nose-wrenching accident in 1973 that no one on set could ignore. Instead of hiding her terrible luck, the writers made fun of it. This led to the Brady Bunch episode, The Subject of Noses, when Marcy gets struck in the face by a football and says, Oh my nose, the moment became a pop cultural classic. Social media users still exchange memes and gifts from the time. Sometimes the simplest things have the most impact. Friendships and uncomfortable loves the show made people laugh on screen, but behind the scenes was a lot of turmoil, especially with crushes. Maureen and Barry Williams, who played her older brother Greg, had a covert affair. The revelation surprised fans. Barry felt for more than Maureen. He had a strange crush on his TV mom, Florence Henderson. This heightened tensions behind the scenes. Maureen, too, experienced inexplicable feelings. She wrote in, here's the story, surviving Marcia Brady and finding my true voice that she liked Robert Reed, who played her father. Maureen's years later jest about dating Eve Plum, who played her sister Jan, may have raised the most eyebrows. Eve was upset by Maureen's joke, even though it was a joke. Maureen and Eve fought as Oprah Winfrey tried to reunite the Brady Bunch. Eve was the only cast member to decline, rumored to be unhappy over the affair. Eve's side said she was furious because Oprah never called, while Maureen thought the joke was the cause. Out of favor. Maureen entered a darker phase of her life after the Brady Bunch ended in the mid-1970s. She fell into crazy parties, drugs, and terrible behavior at 19. Fans' beloved Marsha Brady changed drastically. What did Maureen do to snap? 
her issues stretch beyond childhood fame. The Brady family had a great existence, but Maureen's did not. She felt like she lived two lives because her abuse, addiction, and upheaval at home were different from her TV persona. As a teen, I didn't realize how few people are really what they seem to be said. Yet there I was, hidden behind Marcia Brady's flawless beauty. I sung Brady's It's a Sunshine Day, but no one realized I was afraid. But that wasn't her only nighttime worry. An even worse secret was kept from her by her family. Shocking family secrets and battles. Maureen discovered a dreadful family secret. Her grandma died of syphilis at a mental hospital, she learned. It was even worse that her mother, Irene, contracted the sickness while pregnant. This news shaped Maureen's identity. As she remarked, for a long time, I thought I had syphilis too. I feared going mad and ending up in a mental hospital like my grandmother. It was dreadful. In an honest interview, Maureen claimed her worry of spreading the sickness gave her weird notions while filming The Brady Bunch. Maureen commented, that's what I was thinking about during those emotional crying scenes. Her mother's 2004 kidney cancer death devastated her. It had been years since I lost someone so close, remarked. My mom had been sick for years. Maureen's mother's death was one of several incidents that brought her down. Self-destructive behavior means squandered opportunities. As Maureen McCormick became more involved in drug-filled parties, her bright job started to crumble. Desperate to maintain her addiction, she made unwise judgments that worsened her decline. Due to her crazy lifestyle, lovers came and went quickly, and she had three abortions. McCormick stated that her drug usage had made her make unwise choices and considered herself careless when she looked back. She never anticipated how her childhood wildness would catch up with her. McCormick woke up from a horrible night to find an audition with Steven Spielberg for Raiders of the Lost Ark that would change her life. She attended the audition despite not sleeping in days and being high from drinking. Spielberg didn't cast her because of her appearance. They may have given her an orange since they thought she needed vitamin C most. Everyone knows she didn't get the part. Another director reportedly informed her, you'll never work in this town again, which is terrible. I botched jobs. She told reporters, I was really high and it was terrible. She was drug addicted when filming The Brady Brides in 1981. I was supposed to screen test my hubby on TV at Paramount Studios. I smoked cocaine and played solitaire in my apartment. Although she'd done awful things, Maureen never gave up on being a famous actress. She had modest roles on Happy Days and the love boat her difficult personal life and fame as Marsha Brady made it impossible for her to secure bigger roles. She kept hurting herself while working. Forgiveness Struggle. Midnight Express, a terrifying film about a smuggler in a Turkish prison, would be a tough role for Maureen McCormick. To escape Marsha, McCormick eagerly auditioned as a drug dealer. Only Marcia was visible to the director. The Brady Bunch couldn't fit into a dark, compelling plot. Her acting career seemed doomed after that rejection. It devastated McCormick and made her doubt her path. She wouldn't change course. It seemed like regressing to play Marcia Brady in The Brady Girls Get Married, 1981 TV program. Even if the role's name sounded familiar, McCormick had changed, and the old character felt like a weight around her neck. Behind the scenes, she struggled to cope with her issue and be calm during the presentation. When she missed set, it was suspicious. The producers knew her drug use was out of control, but they had to intervene because filming was underway. It seemed unusual that they gave her tight limitations and removed her car to limit her freedom. Maureen survived the scene unknowingly, but her acting career was over. The following chapter of her story gave her new hope. A way to find love and recover from addiction as pandemonium ensued. Through Maureen, she met Michael Cummings, her lifelong rock. She knew he was the one when they met. If she wanted his heart, she had to convince him she was ready for more than her bad habits. Maureen wanted to impress, so she learned about Cummings whenever she could. She joined his Bible study group and attended his church events to get to know him better. When she finally asked him to a party, she started a new chapter. Cummings became her only supporter and overcame her demons as their friendship grew. Michelle McCormick married Michael Cummings on March 16, 1985, but their marriage was troubled from the start. Maureen's traumatic past brought out her anxieties of closeness on their wedding night. Her weird choice was to delay what was inevitable. Her ex Brady Bunch brothers were invited to their honeymoon suite. Cummings was patient and kind, sharing the bizarre occurrence with her even though most people would have been angry. However, they struggled early on. Maureen's addiction kept returning, requiring rescues, rehab, and even unorthodox treatments. Celebrity Eugene Landy was involved in a controversial treatment, a famous therapist who helped disturb people. The Beach Boys' Brian Wilson was Landy's most famous client, but their relationship soured and Wilson requested a restraining order. Another tragic connection was Star Gig Young, who killed himself twice due to mental illness. Maureen tried to rehabilitate, but Landy made matters worse. Instead of improving, she was given additional drugs that made her feel lost. 
Later, she realized she wasn't sure if she was going or coming. Maureen decided to solve her problem one day at a time because Landy's strategy wasn't working. She was surprised when it worked, but sobriety revealed deeper emotional traumas. Maureen played while sober. She had a brief role in the low-budget 1987 comedy slasher Return to Horror High, which is solely notable for starting George Clooney's career. She reprised Marsha Brady in a very Brady Christmas the following year, reuniting with most of the cast. Although playing Marsha wasn't her dream acting role, it was a consistent source of income. A new comedy drama show, The Bradys, would bring back the Brady family. Maureen refused to join the movie like the others. She was absent for a good reason. Her daughter Rachel Michelle was born in May 1989. I'm glad I didn't watch The Brady Bunch because it was canceled after one month. Now that she was married and had a child, Maureen assumed her troubles were resolved. However, life indicates that peace and stability are still scarce, fighting darkness. After marrying Michael Cummings in 1985, Maureen McCormick overcame her cocaine addiction, but the ghosts plagued her. Her book candidly described how her history had harmed her mentally and emotionally. Her life became terrifyingly full of fear and stress. She had terrible, vivid dreams. One time, she was sure she had killed someone and was going to jail. Anxiety drove Maureen to the edge during her worst episode. I remember her desire to escape the misery. The street below appeared to be the only exit. Luckily, this scary event wasn't the end. She needed a diagnosis and treatment for depression to recover. Maureen reflected on her long journey it took most of my life. A lot of mistakes and decades of pain and suffering to get to this point of peace and acceptance typecast struggles. Maureen realized TV wasn't tiny enough for her objectives after appearing on Herman's head as a younger version of herself. She sought Broadway success and played Rizzo in Greece to escape Marsha Brady's shadow. Her idea came from Broadway's singing showcase. Her own record was coming out. It helped that her brother owned a record label. She released her 1995 country album, When You Get a Little Lonely. She had one clear request. She avoided the Brady Bunch. She wanted to stand without Marsha's shadow for once. It didn't go as planned. The album's cover and liner notes didn't mention her TV career, but a sticker that read Marsha Marsha was hit. Maureen was upset when she learned the sticker was manufactured by a public relations firm, making it difficult for her to defy typecasting. To make matters worse, critics hated the LP. However, this musical fiasco gave one lucky person a great movie role and a taste of fame and disappointment. The 1997 made-for-TV film Get to the Heart, the Barbara Mandrell story starred Maureen as country music icon Barbara Mandrell, Mandrell first wanted Jenny Garth from Beverly Hills, 90210, but directors convinced her to cast Maureen. McCormick hadn't done anything significant in years, so this was a unique chance. Mandrell played the role better than McCormick, according to several reviews. The movie was seen by about 20 million people, however, some criticized it for showing Mandrell's life. McCormick's performance lacked passion and charisma, according to many. After the film's bad reviews, Maureen went away from the public glare to address a family issue rather than linger on her mistakes. Her family emergency and eating disorder battle. Maureen McCormick had to focus on a family dispute. Dr. Phil interviewed her in 2007 about her worrying predicament. He was told she and her brother Kevin were having issues. McCormick believed Kevin was keeping their father from seeing the family to gain money. Because the conflict was too stressful for her mental health, she gained weight while mending. She began her long battle with bulimia at 17 and started attending public high school. She recalls, I was with some friends and we ate a gallon of ice cream. Then someone made a joke about how we could eat whatever we wanted and not gain weight. It seemed too wonderful to be true. I couldn't stop purging once I started after guest starring on The Love Boat in Fantasy Island. She felt pressured to wear revealing swimwear, which made her insecure. After her mother died in 2004, she had to put her mentally challenged brother Denny in a group home, which was very draining. Comfort eating helped her cope with this traumatic time, gaining 30 pounds. McCormick bravely joined Celebrity Fit Club to overcome her eating disorder and regain her health. Her persistence paid off. With nearly 23% weight loss, she set a series record. In an unexpected turn, she barely beat Ross Matthews from RuPaul's Drag Race. McCormick was eager to start a new reality TV chapter after her experience rejuvenated her. Maureen joined Gone Country, a reality show where competitors compete for a country music recording contract because she loves reality TV. She lost the deal, but she got her own reality show, which may be more lucrative. Outsiders Inn followed McCormick as she opened a bed and breakfast in Tennessee, a new start in her profession and a separation from Marsha Brady. McCormick startled fans by appearing in the raunchy Comedy Central celebrity roast in 2009. She made fun of Larry the Cable Guy and Toby Keith using her addiction history, aggressively abandoning her good girl image. She made several naughty remarks that the show's producers had to bleep. Maureen proved to the audience that she could handle the stage as well as she had handled her past. Unexpected discovery. 
a 2015 Australian call sent Maureen McCormick into unfamiliar territory. She was invited to join I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, where she will compete against athletes, presenters, and reality TV stars in the jungle without contemporary amenities. McCormick signed up and flew to Australia without hesitation. McCormick softly dropped a bombshell on the show. She dated Michael Jackson. Her fellow contenders were curious and ready to hear more. Her explanation that their relationship was limited to hand-holding calmed the thrill. Still, some drama lingered after the cameras stopped rolling. New link. McCormick placed fourth after 42 days on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. In the wild, she befriended Australian comedian Joel Creasy. After the concert, the two went to a gay bar in Los Angeles for pool and cocktails. McCormick returned home safely, but problems awaited. Her husband, Michael Cummings, was upset to see his addict wife coming home drunk. He blamed Creasy for the late night shenanigans and misdirected his anger. Cummings believed my star status should get me out of here. McCormick was forbidden from seeing contestants because they were bad influences. It felt like a flashback to her turbulent adolescent years when she was grounded. Forever, Marcia. Maureen McCormick's reality TV shows keep her linked to Marcia Brady despite the UPS and Downs. She danced to the Brady Bunch theme with Artem Chigvintsev on Dancing with the Stars and reunited with her TV siblings on a very Brady renovation. Overcoming addiction, I remember my father threatening to turn me into the police McCormick said of her addiction. I wish I could undo my hurt in an interview. McCormick's husband stated that she became dependent on Prozac after overcoming her cocaine addiction. She overcame that before I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Therapy and faith helped McCormick overcome addiction and find healing and hope, leaving a legacy of perseverance. Maureen McCormick's life shows strength and change. Though she was the quintessential young girl, her real story is complicated. McCormick's path shows that behind every famous figure is a real person fighting their own fights, from Hollywood glory to personal problems. Today, she inspires others facing similar problems. She stressed that addiction is an illness with no shame. Many are embarrassed to discuss it, seeing it as a weakness. Our purpose on earth is to help each other, discuss our experiences. We heal and grow that way. We should also honor Maureen McCormick's perseverance and life lessons as we honor Marsha Brady. Did Maureen McCormick's story inspire you? Share in the comments. If you liked her tenacity and transformation, like this video and subscribe for more inspiring stories. Stay tuned for the next video.